Okay, I have got a 2013 Ford Taurus. Um, it's got the automatic AC in it. And what we're doing today is we're changing out the mode actuator for the AC. That's the one that switches it between the, um, the dash vents and the floor vents and the defrost vents. Um, it's stuck in one position right now. It, it's not changing no matter what we do with, with the, the head unit. So we're gonna get in there and we're gonna change that actuator. Um, it's located up underneath the dash, kind of just to the right of this instrument cluster. So um, the repair procedure is we're gonna pull the instrument cluster out and then we're gonna pull out a lot of stuff down underneath there and we're gonna sneak in there and get there. You do not have to pull the dash on these. It, um, it, is, um, it is buried, but you can get it. So that's what we're going to do today. So if you're interested, just stick along with us. Thanks. Okay, so we're going to start off by taking this finish panel here. There was two screws. One was right here and one was right here. They're just your typical 7 millimeter bolt heads. And then you pop this out. Pop it out there. All right, see how that's nice and wobbly. Disconnect. I got a sensor back here that you'll want to disconnect on there. And you're pulling out these tabs here. Okay. So there's a connector here you'll want to disconnect. And then there's another one over here for the pedal adjustments that you'll want to disconnect right there. Okay. And then you can pull that whole thing out of the way. We're going to be taking the knee bolster that's behind it out of the way too. So it's better to just go ahead and disconnect the connectors and take the whole thing out of place. The... Alright, here's your connector. There's a little tab. It's facing up and you just push that little tab right there and you can pull it out. This one has it right there. Hard to do one-handed, but the little tab is right here where my forefinger is pushing. I gotta set you guys down. Okay, next we're gonna take this finished piece out that's right in front of the instrument cluster. There's a bolt right there. Let's get that out of there. Somebody has been in here before. These things are way over tightened. One of the ones down at the bottom, they'd actually drilled it right through the plastic. Seriously? I broke it. There we go. Must have tripped the breaker on the thing. That's, you know, no, you guys don't ever over tighten these bolts. These little fragile pieces of plastic, they don't need to be hammered on so hard. I can definitely tell somebody was big time over tightening. Okay. There we go. Now you see, I reached behind and popped it like this. And I'm going to pull this section kind of down. Okay. And then you want to use a trim tool to bring it down the rest of the way. Something that's not going to damage anything. And I don't know what I did with my trim tool. Oh, there it is. One second. Okay, so... You want to lower your column down as much as possible using this button here, okay, to give yourself more room to navigate this thing out. Like I said, you can use a trim tool to gently pry it down if the, the tabs are, are stuck. Mine came out pretty easily, so I didn't actually have to use it, but now you can bring her down. wriggle her out of here. 
Okay, that was definitely a two-handed operation there. So I'm gonna try to recreate taking this piece out. First of all, see that tab there on the bottom of your little leather thing? That is goes into this little slot right here. Okay, so you'll need to pop that out and then there's two connectors right here and right here. So you wanna get that leather piece free. Then gently bring the bottom of the trim piece out. You're gonna have to navigate it around the turn signal sock. Um, it's, you know, you just be patient. Get that out of there, get this side out, and then you can bring it, bring the back down and out, okay? Um, it's a, it's a tight fit, it, it really is, but it, it's out, it's not broken. Um, I didn't damage anything, just be patient with it. It's, it's a little jigsaw puzzle, but it will come out. Okay, now for the instrument cluster. We have one, two, I think there's supposed to be four screws. Let's take a look. Aha, somebody's been in here before, look at that. Missing screw, missing screw. I'm telling you. Oh, you guys didn't get to see. One second, let me change the angle. I'm terrible about covering it up. Look, missing screw, missing screw. Shame on you, whoever was in here before me. Over tightening stuff, leaving stuff missing. That's ridiculous. All right, so it does have four screws. Two on the going facing up and then two on the bottom. I am only gonna have to remove two and then I get to go chasing through and seeing if I have anything that will secure that top, top part when I go to put it back together. I don't like it when people do that, but well, hopefully I'll have some screws that'll fit it. Okay, we have our instrument cluster out. I left it connected and just set it on top of the dash pad, just like that. Shouldn't hurt anything. And that way it's not disconnected from the vehicle. All right. There's our cavity that somehow is supposed to help us out. I haven't seen how yet, but we're getting there. The next step is we're gonna get out down here and remove this knee bolster. And that's gonna require, I think it's a two seven millimeters. And it looks like two 10 millimeters. If you guys haven't ever seen these little things, these locking extensions for your uh, quarter inch drive gun, they're really cool. Um, I know Matco sells them. I'm not sure if the other companies do. I doubt Matco makes them, but it is a pretty, pretty neat little tool. Works even better when you put the right size socket on it. So that's not a 10 millimeter, that's an eight millimeter. That's out of the way. So, let's move that where we're not going to be laying on it. All right, and I'm going to collect up all these bolts real quick because I'm going to have to get up underneath there, and it hurts when you dig these things into your back. So, on to the next step. Okay, the next step is we're going to lower, remove this lower steering column shroud. So there's two bolts underneath there. One. Two. You always wanna double check when you hear something drop that you didn't drop. It's just that screw. Okay. 
And there we go. Pop that out of there. That switch is actually not coming with it, so that's easy enough. And on to the next step. Okay, so we need to disconnect this on the uh, accelerator pedal. So you push that little red tab up and then push it in the center and take that out of there. And then we need to disconnect the entire, we want not, not the electrical portion, we want to take the entire switch, this thing here, out. And I wish I could show you how to do it, but I can't hold the camera and do this. Um, it's very important that you do not move this brake pedal while you're taking this switch out, because you can break the switch if you do. So it rotates and pops out. I'll try to recreate that when I get done. One second. Okay, so that was a chore. Um, this little thing sits in there like that, right? And it's got these two little tabs that are supposedly retaining it. And the trick is, in this thing, you want to rotate it, but unlike most vehicles that would rotate counterclockwise, you can't, you, know, you don't have enough room. So you start from the position it's at, you rotate it clockwise about, uh, I don't know, maybe 60 degrees or so clockwise. And then you'll feel it pop and you can pull it on out of there. Like I said, don't move this brake pedal. The reason why is if you have the brake pedal down and you pop it and then you bring the brake pedal back up, it can get behind this plunger and snap it off. All right, so there we go, that's out of the way. Okay, so now we can see where we're going. And this is the connector for the mode door actuator right there. And then one of the bolts is right here above my finger. See it right there? Okay, it's this stupid harness is in the way, but you're gonna have to get in here and get that, that bolt right there out of there. It's an eight millimeter, so we're gonna work on that, and then I'll show you how you get to the upper one. But this is another one of these things where you gotta pop the little red tab out. And I may just wait until I get the thing out of the box to get it. But you get a little, I don't think I'm gonna get it with my finger. Maybe I can get it with, with a small screwdriver. But you pop that little red thing down, push it on the, on the tab, and pull the harness off. Okay, Oop, just lost my light. But we're getting out of here anyway so I can get some tools. All right, there she is. I had to stop and ask the Lord for forgiveness for all the words that were coming out of my mouth getting that screw out. So, anyway, it, you can get it. I ended up using a, a universal, just a single one. Didn't have a another one here. But get in there, and you just got to kind of wedge around that harness and get in there and, and take her out. It is trying but eh, that's uh part of being a mechanic okay so now we get to do the top one and the top one is super fun look Ugh. um get this light up here okay remember how we took out that instrument cluster oops we're not supposed to honk the horn all right if you look carefully let me get you in here You see that bolt right back there? That's the other bolt you gotta get. Hang on. Enhance. <laughs> if you know, you know. Anyway, um, there you go. That is the other bolt you gotta get to. So we're gonna squeeze in there with that same universal and extension up through the top. Uh, I'll try to get the whole thing set up and maybe I'll try to film it real quick. All right, as you can see, there's my screw. Yeah, it went all the way down to the carpet. All right, that's both screws. Now we get to play riddle that thing out from underneath. All right, and there she is. You can see this is not a Ford part. Neither is the one I'm putting back in because when I went to Ford, who said they had it on the shelf, they didn't have it on the shelf. So I had to go and get one from one of the local vendors. And of course, they carry the Dorman products. So, hopefully it works out, but here's the part. Let's go compare it to our other one. 
one of these things is not like the other but before you go running back to the parts store notice the outside of it looks exactly the same i think what's happened is this is the new one and this piece stayed behind in the box so let's go see if we can pop that piece out this this white piece right here pull that out of the box before we go running back to the parts store because i think this is the correct part it's just it came into two pieces as we were removing it. All right, so it was in the stuck in the thing. So we took it out and we put it back into the motor. And now I can't get it to come back out again. That's all right. But I wanted to point out that these things have an orientation. See that? Where there's a one little rib that's missing. All right. Well, the new motor, that little rib, is in a different spot. Okay, but it's in the correct spot. See the arrow? All right. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to try to activate the motor when it's out of the car and try to get the rib to match up. Instead, what you need to do is move the door to match this. And most of the time, you could just take the motor and put it in, line it up correctly, and then just turn the whole motor to line up the bolts. And that's the easiest way to get everything lined back up again. Um, the, da the danger in powering these things up or trying to change it while this out of the car is a lot of times um, they will actually spin beyond their range and they'll be no good. So um, don't ever take these actuators and try to power them up and move them if you're planning on reusing them um, be with, um, without them being where they're going to stop where they're supposed to. All right, so next step is we're gonna fish this thing in here. I have no idea how I'm gonna hold a camera and do that, so y'all are just gonna have to trust me that it'll be frustrating, but I'll get it in there. Okay, see you guys in a minute. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I lost my cool a few times trying to get that stupid actuator to line up. I'm trying to let you guys see. I don't know how we're gonna do this. I'm probably going to edit this out because I can't get I can't get on a camera on putting that screw back in. We're about to put the screw back in right there. Uh, a lot of this is so tedious with the camera because I can see it, but y'all can't because we only have one line of sight. Uh, it's there through that hole, but the minute I put the camera there light can't get there it's so limited all right um i forgot to film putting the instrument collector back in but it's, it goes back in the same way it came out and then i put the bezel back over the top of it i did notice that and this is why i remembered i need to start filming again it is easier to deal with this leather flappy if the steering column shroud is out so now we'll put this back in, kind of drop it in place. And because it's loose, we can get this lined up. Well, we could if we had two hands. But see, this tab goes into the top of the steering column shroud. So just put that in there. And then there's the two little tabs on each side. pop in all right see that was way easier than trying to fight with it with this thing all attached also I have the steering column all the way back and all the way down with that little button on the side remember I was telling you about um, big big help to, to pull that thing out all right I got to put the knee bolster and all my stuff underneath back in place and then we'll give it a test fire uh, while I'm doing all this, I went ahead and went into the fuse box that's right underneath the steering column. And I pulled out fuse number 15, which is that, uh, there, see how on the top you see red, 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 and a blank? That blank is a blue 15 amp fuse. That is fuse number 15 that needs to be removed so that these actuators will recalibrate when, when we put it all back together. They say leave it out for a minute and then put it all, you know, and then uh, turn the car on and it'll um, 
learn itself. I just go ahead and pull the fuse while I'm under there and then it'll already, I can just put it in right before I'm ready to fire it up. Okay, and we are finished. We got nice cold air blowing in my face, which I needed right now. Uh, this was a fix. It was that actuator that was in there. I have a note though. Um, Maybe you guys recall, I said it looked like somebody had been in here before. Turns out that somebody had been in here before, replaced that exact same actuator. And what they did is they left a bolt out. So it, earlier I said there was two bolts. There should have been three. And uh, when I realized that, it looked to me like it would be really easy for this motor to cock out of place. And maybe that may have been the problem. So um, just make sure... When you're, when you're going in there, obviously, you're going to notice that there's three bolts. Make sure you put all three back. I know they're a pain. Actually, the one this the previous guy left out was, in my opinion, the easiest one to put back in. But it needs to have all three in there or it will pop out of place. Um, and we are, we're all set with this one. Everything's back where it should be. She's running. We got AC. I think this lady will be happy. Best of luck, guys.